Hello my little butterflies and this video is going to be my December 3 in 1. So you guys, the 3 in 1 topic thing was created by Sherry from Sherry Walker and I'm going to link her booktube channel down below as well as the Goodreads group that this is created in, which is booktubers from around the world, which she also created. And I'm going to link that down below in the description bar so you guys can check it out if you want to do it yourself. And this month's topic is authors you've read for the first time in 2017. And I read a lot of new authors that I've never read this month. But I'm going to say my, I guess, my top three. And then I'm going to mention all the other authors that I read for the first time that are my honorable mentions. Now, if it was a book that I read from them, like if it was an author I read from the first time in a book I didn't like it, this is not included. Okay? Number one is Sophie Kinsella. And I read My Not So Perfect Life. And I read this in January. And this is my first Sophie Kinsella book. And I loved it so much. This was her new release for this year. And oh my god y'all, like I loved this book so much. It was Chitlick and this is what got me into wanting to read more Chitlick because I was like, this is just too fucking good. It was funny, I loved it, I like I was into it, it was just so amazing. Like I, I want to read the Shopaholic series, I thought those were going to be my first books from Sophie Kinsella. But then when I got this one, I got my Not So Perfect Life from NetGalley, I was just like... Oh my god, I didn't even think I was going to get the book. I didn't think they were going to give it to me just because it was so freaking sell And I was like, they're not going to give me that. But it was so freaking amazing. And you guys should definitely go check that book out because I loved it. Like, I, I've been geeked out about that book all year. And that was one of my favorite books this year. And I definitely started off the year right. Which is probably why my reading has gone so amazing. And my number two author is Noelle Stevenson. And I read three books from her this year. And um, one of them was Numona which was my favorite oh my god y'all i love this so much it's a graphic novel they're all graphic novels and oh my god y'all nimona was so fucking good <laughs> i know i gave nimona five stars I, I didn't think i was gonna like nimona that much i thought it was gonna be like okay yeah it's cute or whatever because it's a graphic novel i didn't think i was gonna be in love with it as much as i was and i just i loved it so freaking much and then i also read um lumberjanes volume one and volume two and those I was just like they were okay I didn't really like it that much I like the first volume more than I like the second volume and I just I'm not gonna continue reading them because I didn't really care for them that much I just was kind of like whatever about them but I really 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 love Nimona and I definitely recommend Nimona I just think Lumberjanes are kind of overhyped I don't know. It seemed like everybody on BookTube loves them, but I just think it's overhyped because they was like, eh, to me. They were like, ah, all right. They was kind of, like, the plot for Lumberjanes kind of gets a little boring, and it's like, okay. Okay. Like, it, it feels like an afterthought, but Nimona was amazing. And my third author is Ellen Hopkins, and Ellen Hopkins is nowhere near a new author. And um, I read um, two of her poetry books, which was Glass and Crank. And I freaking loved it. it. It is a series. They were in a series. I think it's three of them in the series. And I love Glass so much. Um, I gave Glass and Crank, I think, four stars. I didn't get both of them four stars. But, um, no, I'm lying. I did get both of them four stars, but I'm confusing Glass with Crank. Crank was the first book, and Glass was the second book. Crank, I loved the most. Glass, I liked it, but I did say I did start getting frustrated with, uh, what's her name? I think her name was Kat. I think that was her name. But I started getting frustrated with her, but Glass, I mean, Crank was freaking amazing. I loved it. And, um, there is a third book in that series, but I did say I'm not going to read it. I think it's Impulse. Because she has another series of poems, too, that I want to read those. But the third one I don't want to read because I'm just like, I'm good with it being where it's at. And if y'all don't know, because I'm trying to explain why I'm not going to continue. Crank, well, the Crank, the series itself, the trilogy, is about this girl, Catherine, I think. And it's how she ended up getting addicted to uh, meth and what it, how it pretty much transformed her life. She ends up getting pregnant and it ends up following all of that, that whole mishap. And the third book, which I said I'm not going to read, is about how apparently she ends up having like three kids while she's addicted to meth. And it's supposed to be following how all three of them are now like, well I don't know if all three of them is, but I know the oldest one is supposed to be about how he 
is um, doing meth also and I just don't like the idea of saying that because your mother was addicted to drugs or your father's addicted to drugs that I was like in your DNA and you have to be addicted to drugs now because your mother did it especially when he didn't he wasn't really raised by his mother he was raised with his grandparents and I'm just like I don't like the whole concept of knowledge in your DNA so I said I'm not gonna read that one I'm perfectly fine leaving it where it's at and I'm okay with that but I definitely recommend them because it was amazing. The poetry was just like really, really good. And I just, I loved it. Like it was good. And then I mentioned that I had some honorable mentions, which um, I read, like I said, I read a lot of authors I've never read before this year. So um, I'm just, I'm not going to tell y'all each what it's about because it's quite a few of them, but I'm just going to go through and tell you the author and the book that I read for them and why I read that book. So first we have Marissa Maya. I read Cinder this year and I love Cinder so much I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars. And if you don't know, Cinder is a retelling of Cinderella. And that's like the whole Lunar Chronicles series is like a retelling of different uh, fairy tales. The next author I'm going to talk about is DJ Riordan, Riordan Hall. And I read Sugar from Her, which I think was the very first book that I read this year. And it was a YA contemporary book. I loved it so much. I gave it four stars. And um, I always compare this book to, um, what is it? I never read this book before. And I can't think of the name of it. I want to read it. But I always compare it to this because of how I heard people explain it. It's kind of like that. It's about, um, it, the book that I'm trying to compare it to is about, uh, like, a big girl. It's about her being comfortable in her body. I cannot, like, think of the name of it. It's like a black cover. It's like a girl in a red dress on the cover. But I, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about because it's, like, it's talked about a lot on book two. Then I also read Casey West for the first time. And it was for The Feeling Boyfriend, which I gave that book three out of five stars. Because it wasn't a bad book, but you guys know I always say I would not do YA contemporary romance and it's just like, I just, I cannot do it. Because it's too mushy. So that's why I just ended up getting three stars. It was just way too mushy and I, took, I, I just think our main character just took way too much and she thought about people's opinion too much, which is why I gave it three stars. But um, this isn't going to be the last time I read Casey West because there are some other books I want to read by her. And I know for one, Pivot Point is one of them. I've been wanting to read that for a while. So that book is a, also is a book that I'm going to be reading for her. But pretty much anything that anything else that's much she likes to fill in boyfriend, I won't read. Because it's just it's too much for me. It's just too perfect. Then I read Vicki Delaney, um, Elementary She Read, which is the first book in the series. And I got that book from NetGalley. And it's supposed to be like a, um, a Sherlock's Home Bookshop mystery series. And I think I read this in like March or May. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. I really like the mystery. I really like following along with the mysteries. And then um, I also got the second book from Nat Galley too that came out in September but I haven't read it yet. So I was supposed to read it in September and I had not read it yet. But I will read it. If I'm not kept, I'm going to read it. But um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. I recommend that because that was a, like a really, really good mystery. And I don't think that was a YA um, book. I think that was like new adult or something like that because she wasn't a teenager. She was an adult. But it was really good. Then I also read, um, for the first time, Elaine Reardon, and it was a collection of poetry. Um, the Heart is a Nursery for Hope. And I really enjoyed it. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars. The poetry was just so beautiful. Um, her poetry, she really took in, like, all of the nature and, like, things, like, earthy things into her poems. And I just really thought it was, like, really fresh. And it was, like, just really relaxing. And I said her poems just make me feel things reading them. And it's a really good, her collection of poetry is really good to read out loud because you, like, really hear the power. And then when you, like, reading it aloud, and it's like you're not even trying to, it's just the way that your voice takes on to it. And I really enjoyed it, and I do recommend that. That's also a book I got from Nat Galley, and I do have a review for any books that I'm talking about that I have reviews for. I'm going to link them in the eyes so you guys can see it. I just thought about that. But it was a really amazing book. And then um, I got an email from an author, Natalia Banks, about reading her book, The Sheik's Love Triangle. And I know I'm not saying Sheik, right? Somebody corrected me, but I'm still not sure how to say it. But I know I'm not saying it right. But she um, emailed me this book for me to review, and I did enjoy it. It's a novella, so it's pretty short. It's not anything like a, it's not a full length novel. I did give it a four out of five stars. It's like a, it's um, like a billionaire something romance book. It was nice and it was spicy and it was really good. I really enjoyed it. The only thing I didn't like was that it was like insta love. It's like love at first sight and I did not like that. But everything else was amazing and it was like I said it's short. So it's something quick that you can read if you're just looking for something spicy. Then I read Michelle Alexander, <laughs> The New Jim Crow. 
which came out in 2010 and I heard about it in I think it was 2014 I heard about it when I was going to Southeastern and I was part of the NAACP and one of the girls bought it up and I've been wanting to read it since then but I never really went to actually pick it up but it's been on my list to read and I finally checked it out from the library I loved it so much like I just thought it was just really informative it is non-fiction so it's not anything fictional but it's really really good I gave it five stars and I do recommend that too because it was so amazing it's just like it's like I learned so many things reading it it's just really good and but it was a library book so I said I want to buy my own copy because I really 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 wanted to like highlight in that book and like annotate so much so I could pass it on to other people because I just thought it was so good I think that's a good book for like a lot of people to read because in like today's world how things have been going lately it's like we really don't know it's like a lot of younger people don't know like older people too like don't know exactly what their rights is and how things work and it's like then when you get pulled over you have like this cocky attitude and you don't know like what's going on and a bad situation goes from bad to worse and it's not a book bashing anything bashing any police or anything it's not anything like that it's just really telling you how things are and how things work it's not bashing anybody and believe me um i have an unbiased opinion because my fiance is a police officer so i have an unbiased um opinion of this book it's not bashing anyone it's just really telling you how things work okay from both ends it's like but it's really good and I really think you guys need to read it. It's about how mass incarceration is, you know, like the new Jim Crow. It's like another way, another cast to put, you know, black people and colored people in just, and not, and colored people aren't just like black people. I mean like minorities, okay? That's, it's like another racial caste system for the Jim Crow. That's what it is. Like the, That's why they call it the new Jim Crow. And I think you guys should read that. I'm leaving because I can really talk about this book all black day. Then I read, um, Vanita. Oh, I'm gonna put it on there. I don't know how to say it, so I'm not gonna fuck her name up. But it is a, a children's collection of poetry, and it's Ivy and Bloom, and it was just so beautiful. Now, when I oh, when I got this, I didn't think that it was going to be like pictures and beautiful. I think when I requested, I didn't think it was a children's collection of poetry. So when I seen it, I was like, oh my god, this is so cute. And I did say this would be like so amazing to read to Khalil. I think I was pregnant at the time when I read it, and I was like, I think she would. What am I talking about? I know I wasn't pregnant. Um, I don't know how old Khalil, how many months she was when I, I read this, but it was just like so amazing. It was just so cute. The pictures were really cute. The poems were like short and cute, and they all like tied in together. It was like a story, but it was like in poetry, and it was just so cute. And I did say that, so like that would be a great book to introduce your kids to poetry with. If you're looking for something to introduce your children to poetry with, that would be like so good because it was cute and it was short. It wasn't anything long. It was anything complex. It was just beautiful. And I did end up giving it five stars. And then I read um, from Shell's. Silverstein and this was um, Where the Sidewalk Ends and it was also a children's collection of poetry and it's an older collection it's not even think anything new it was old she is like uh, it's like classic children uh, poetry that's like it was like it's old it's not anything new and um, I've always wanted to read it I've always seen it I was like I should read this and pick it up and, and, and see and try it out I really enjoyed it and I gave this four to five stars the poems was just really cute and funny like I was reading and I was laughing so I know if I was to read this to like an older child, because Khaled's still kind of young, so she's probably not gonna, she, you know, don't get it. But like older kids, like if you read it to them, they'll be laughing too. But it's a good poetry, it's a good way to introduce your kids to poetry as well. And I just think if you're trying to get your kids into poetry, this is really good because it's so cute and they're funny. So it's gonna keep them engaged because they're gonna laugh. Then I read Peggy Kern, I read Little Peach. And and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. And this is um, a YA contemporary about how this girl, how this 15 year old girl, 14, 14 year old girl got um, drug into prostitution. And I enjoyed it because I got to see from the other side because you always wonder, seeing these kids, it's like how did you even get into how? Like what happened to you? Where are your parents? How did that happen? And it's like... Even the older people is like, why did you choose this life? And you get to see how how they were manipulated and turned to like, you know, like respect their their pimp or their daddy, whatever. But you get to see how they how the pimp like really manipulated their minds into thinking this is what that they're thinking that they're looking out for them. They're thinking the best for them. And it's it was just I liked it and I, I recommend it because it's like you really it's like almost reading like a lifetime movie reading this book. And then I read B.R. Myers' um, Night Shift, which is a book I got from NetGalley. I'm not sure if this was this author's first book or not, 
but this this was a new release this year and I did give this a three out of five stars and I really like it um it's not what I thought it was gonna be at all like it threw me off like read this and not you think it's ghosts and I'm gonna just leave it at that because it, it was something totally different which is what I like because it was new and it was different it's not something that's been done before at least not that I know of so I really enjoyed that and I do recommend that and I'm pretty sure I did a review for it not 100% but if I didn't do a video review I definitely did a good review or on my blog and I'm going if it's not a, a book that I did a video review for I'm going to link my blog review for it down below so you guys can check it out and then I read from Jacqueline Woodson I read Brown Girl Dreaming and that book was so good I don't remember when I read it though I'm pretty sure I gave it like a four or five stars and that is a collection of poetry and it's like it's like um like an autobiography kind of poetry thing because it's Jacqueline Woodson talking about how she grew up and what she had to go through growing up but in poetry and I just thought it was so Good. like it was so amazing and I just was, it opened my eyes to some things because she um I don't know if she's still a practicing Jehovah Witness but that's that was her religion growing up I didn't know anything about Jehovah Witnesses growing up except for when they ring the doorbell you do not answer the door that's the only thing I've ever known and I know that's bad but that's just how it's raised like if they come to the door we're not home don't you answer that door don't even move don't load the TV turn the lights off that's how it's raised and I'm pretty sure a lot of people like that too. So I didn't know anything about like Jehovah Witnesses. I didn't know anything about the religion. So reading this, I kind of learned some things about that. I'm like, oh, okay, I understand. I learned a lot of things I didn't know. So I really think that was really good. And it brings insight into like a whole different culture, not just because she's black, but because she's a Jehovah Witness. I, I know that's a, a religion that a lot of people don't understand because I was one of them. And then I read from Kirsten White and I read And I Darken. Um... Uh, oh my god. As I Rise, I think just came in out in July. I haven't read it yet though. But And I Darken was so good. Like y'all don't understand how good And I Darken was for me. And I wasn't expecting that. Um, that was the only book that I picked out of my uh, Ravenclaw Reads jar. I haven't picked out of that again yet. I'm about to start picking out of there again. I just got sidetracked with other stuff. But it was so good. I loved it. Definitely loved that. I think I gave it four stars. It was amazing. Not what I was expecting. So many things happened in this book that I wasn't expecting. That was a retelling of uh, of uh, of Vlad the Impaler, which I didn't know nothing about. So when it first started off, and it said Drac, it, it was saying Dracula. I was like, is this about vampires? I'm thinking Dracula. I'm like, oh. Okay, good. It's not about vampires because I didn't know how I was going to feel because I haven't been in a mood to read vampires lately. It's just that nothing can stand up to Twilight, so I'm never, like, in a mood to really read vampires anymore. And I just, I was a Twilight, so in my book, nothing can compare to Twilight vampire-wise. So, that what it was. But I really enjoyed it. I recommend it. it. Like, so many things happened that I wasn't expecting. And I'm gonna link the reviews so you guys can see that. And then I read Temple Matthews, which was Bad Girl Gone. That was a new release this year. I think it came out August 8th. I'm pretty sure it came out August 8th. And I think I gave that four stars too. This is a book that I got off of Net Galley, but I also got like I won a, um, a physical print copy, a paperback copy from Goodreads. Here it is. I, I won this copy from Goodreads. I enjoyed this. This is like a, a paranormal YA book. And I enjoy reading this because it, it, it really took me on like this like ghost justice thing. It's like an orphanage for kids that have been killed and they're trying to figure out who are their, who, who've been murdered and they're trying to figure out who their murderer was. And they like, you know, get their ghost justice on them whether it be killing them or just driving them crazy. They get their revenge and then they get to ascend up to heaven. Um, yeah, uh, I don't think that's how it works. But it's a good idea, you know, because I'm like, yeah, get your revenge back. So it, it's like them solving their own murders. And I just, I really, really enjoyed this book. It was so good. Uh, I recommend this. It's out. Go get it. It was really good. And then I read from John Newfold. He did a, um, a graphic novel called A.D. New Orleans After the Deluge. And it's uh, pretty much a graphic novel about Katrina. And, well, Hurricane Katrina. And... I enjoyed it like it kind of made me emotional in some parts but it was really good I think I gave it five stars but I may have gave got given it uh, four stars giving it four stars I'm not really sure it's just a four or five stars but it was good and I recommend this for people who don't know about like 
Hurricane Katrina, like personally, like it, it, it really, it, it teaches you some things that you don't know. Like I say, I always tell a lot of people say, why well, didn't just leave? If all of them would have left, you know, then none of that, all of those people wouldn't have died. But it wasn't that easy, and it explains how little time people had and the restraints that some people had when they couldn't leave. And this was just amazing, and how things just like happened overnight. It was good. So I recommend this to you guys if you guys want to know more about how Hurricane Hurricane Katrina affected people and like how it really went down. It was just so raw and so real. And that's what made it like really emotional, like reading it. Okay. So I'm leaving there. Then I read um from this collection of poetry from Kai Ching Tong. That's my first time reading from um uh, reading about transgender. And I didn't know anything about that. Like I like I know about like just about general stuff, but to actually get that deep in and it was like real raw. And I really liked that. Now can I remember if I gave it a four or a three star? I, I enjoyed it and it was just so real. It wasn't it, it, it wasn't cookie cutter. It wasn't like, you know, keeping it PG. It was like real. This is it. This is this is how it happened. It's how I'ma tell you. And I enjoyed that. So check that out. And then I read from Reginald um, Hoodland. And then I read A Justified Bitch by H.G. McKinnis. And it's the book that I actually, I got it from Nangali, but then I also got um, the publishing company contacted me and asked me if I wanted a physical copy. So I was like, fuck it right, I don't want a physical copy. So they sent me a physical copy and it was like, it took them like two days. So I was like, okay, that shit was quick. And it was so fucking good. This is the new adult murder mystery book and I loved it so much you guys need to go read it I can't I, I don't know if I gave a, I think I gave like a 4.5 out of 5 stars or something like that but I loved it you guys need to go read it check that out it was like really good that came out in August too I think it was really good and I also said this is like a bridge that book like it's like a bridge from young adult to new adult because a lot of people don't a lot of booktube is like stuck on YA they're not really into the adult genre and I think this is really good because it was it's so much was going on it was just so good and it's like you don't even think about like oh this is in YA it was good so you guys should read it if you're thinking about trying to explore other genres which all of us should be trying to do just to spread our wings then I read from Kieran Gillian and then I read from Daniel Way then I read from Brian Michael Bendis. Then I read um, a collection of short stories from Tom Parada. And I think it's called um, Senior Year. And it was really good. And it had an excerpt at the end of a little sneak peek of his next book that was coming out. And I just loved it. And I need to go read. I need to go get that book from the library and read it. Because I'm pretty sure my library has it. And it was just amazing. And Senior Year was really great. And it really satisfied my hunger. Because I have been looking for short stories to read. And um, it really satisfied it. And I'm like still craving some short stories. I've just really been wanting to read short stories lately. I don't know what it is. And then I read an absent mind from Eric Real, Which is an Alzheimer's awareness novel. And I think I gave it four stars or three stars. And I really enjoyed it. I really recommend it because a lot of people don't know, um, intense, like, intense on, like, what Alzheimer's is. And some people just think that's something you get of old age, and it's not. It's a brain degenerative disease, and it, and the, at the end game, is going to kill you eventually. It, it's, it's no, like, like you know, secure timeline. It really depends on the person and how fast your disease is moving. There's medication for it, but it's only to like make you comfortable and give you moments of clarity. It's not anything that's fixing the problem. And eventually, like it's gonna eat so much at your brain, you're not gonna be able to, you're pretty much gonna be bedridden. Somebody's gonna have to like change your diapers and you know, wheel you around. It's like, you're not gonna be able to do anything. And eventually you won't be able to even talk. You won't even be able to communicate. You're just gonna be like a shell of a person. And then, you know, the only thing left is death. So, that is what that book is about. Hey guys, you know what? I'm like, hardcore on Alzheimer's Awareness. November was Alzheimer's Awareness Month. And, um, I tried to include a fact at the beginning of all my videos in November. And, uh, trying to get people to donate to the, um, Alzheimer's Association. And I'm also going to link the, um, the ALZ.org down below so you guys can go. And if you want to donate, you can. If you want to see when, I think, I don't know if they have the, um, the walk is up for next year yet. If you guys want to go, you guys can go and register for walks for the, um, walk singing challenge. It's free to register. It's free to do. And you get a free shirt. So, I mean, it's just, it's free to do if you want to go and show your support. So, um, yeah, I'm going to get off this topic. <laughs> Continue and finish my video, which isn't that much 
And then um, the last authors that I read from was Lisa Charlie Boy and Mary Beth Leatherdale. And they wrote uh, Not Your Princess. And it was for, and it's like a Native American kind of like heritage book. Because you it, they edited it together, but it's like so many different pieces from Native Americans is included in this book. You have pieces from authors and, you know, um, athletes and Native American like um, artists and like teachers and you know professors just from all different walks of life and actresses and stuff all different walks of life included into this book and it was very beautiful and i loved it um november was also native american heritage month My grandmother, my great grandmother is half Native American and I don't know, so I don't know what that makes me, but I would like to do like the Ancestry DNA thing, the 23andMe thing and see how much it means me and see what I have. That, I think that would be a fun video to do and like I can let you guys know what I am 100% and like shock the shit out of myself. But anyway, I'm just, that was the last um, authors I wanted to talk about anyway, but I'm done. <laughs> I'm so done, you guys. Thank y'all for watching my video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.